pedagogy. What is the history of pedagogy? The role of teacher can be traced back in the ancient Greece with the Socrates in the 5th century BC as the keystone of what we now consider the modern education. Uh, the role of teacher has developed from the days of ancient Greece when the slaves would accompany the children to school whilst their masters work and the profession of educator, uh, educator grew from there. Schools appeared in England as 900, uh, 597 AD and it's generally believed that the first school in England was the King's School in Canterbury, Kent. Like many other first schools, King's, schools, uh, King's School had links to the church and today operates as public school. The content of the curriculum could be split into two sections by that time. We have the review, which includes grammar, rhetoric, and logic. And the last one is quadrivium, which includes arithmetic, astronomy, geometry, and music. So what is the reason behind that's a very short history? Because this pedagogy is a very old topic to uh, discuss, but up to now is still on the line to our education sector and to our educators. So it has a long way and a long background indeed. So the term pedagogy is derived from the word or from the ancient word pedagogo, uh, pedagogos, which is actually split into two more terms in ancient Greece, which means pedos as boy or child and agohos, which means to lead. So literally, it means to lead children or a leader of child. So in uh, denotative meaning, the approach to teaching includes the theory, the practice of learning, and how these process influence and is influenced by the social, political, and psychological development of our learners. Let us start first with the social background. So what do you mean by the social background that we need? So we're not yet there. Uh, let's go back to the next slide, uh, to the previous slide, I mean. So first we have the social environment or the interaction. Uh, a further back, sir. We're still on the uh, second slide. Okay. So the social environment gives the interaction or the capacity of uh, students to interact with other individuals and other learners. So by means of that, they learn. Political, it is actually how the government influences the education sector in terms of what curriculum to use. And psychological, which includes the schema or the prior knowledge of our learners. So the, the mind of child or the mind of children as a language acquisition device in terms of language learning and teaching. Since literally it pertains to children, how about adults? Aren't we uh, having this so-called education? So let's learn about adult learning. Next slide, please. So the term adult learning brings us the concept of andragogy as Malcolm Knowles, an American practitioner and theorist of adult education defined andragogy in his article, uh, it is the art and science of helping adults to learn. So in his uh, article, he actually emphasized six principles of learning of adults, which are as follows. Adults are internally motivated and self-directed, so we do know what we want to learn, and we don't. Uh, we do know how to get them. Next, adults bring life experiences and knowledge to learning experiences. Since we are existing in this world for a longer time, we have a lot of experience to share. Next, we adults are goal-oriented. We want to know how to deal with our steps in getting our goal. Adults are also relevancy oriented. If we if it's not relevant, we're not going to deal with it unless we're just fooling around. Next, adults are practical. Practicality is the key here. So we do things the easiest way, but the smartest way. And next, adult learners like to be respected. So one thing in, uh, that is not uh, the same with children is the respect that we want to of course given to us even though we're also students with this we have a glint bits of information about andragogy to compare the two more let me share with you an awesome chart created by i've gotten uh, i've gotten this uh, chart in floridatech.net.org next slide please 
Okay. So the learner, in terms of ped uh, pedagogy and andro andragogy, let me have it. I'm oh okay. So the learner is dependent upon the instructor for all the learnings. So independent in terms of what to do and what to actually think of, since the teacher is the main source of knowledge. And in andragogy, we are more self-directed. We want to know what is our uh, development. So unlike in pedagogy, we are also the one to assess ourselves. In terms of role as learners, we are actually having uh, differences with the pedagogy. Let's have first the pedagogy. So the activity uh, uh, has something to do with the little experience that we have, or the, those children that has something to do with uh, their experience. They have little knowledge on things. So we use those knowledge as springboard for motivation only. But in andragogy, those experiences by adults can be used as uh, a connected learning. Next, we have readiness to learn. So students, of course, they are actually learning in terms of the pace given by the teacher. However, in andragogy, uh, there are changes that likely trigger to the readiness. For example, you want to learn English because you have met someone who speaks English and you're not that good in English. So you wanted to learn English because of that person. So it's also uh, based on your self-need and self-want. Next, we have orientation to learning. In, uh, in pedagogy, or in pedagogy, we have learning process in acquiring prescribed su a subject matter. Content units is sequenced according to the logic of subject matter. So the school gives you the set of subjects and the set of uh, lessons. Unlike in andragogy, you have, uh, you're actually having this uh, learning, but you want to connect it to real life. So if you're dealing with older um, students, they will be asking you, teacher, are these relevant when we grow up? Or are we going to use that in real life situations? And lastly, we have motivation for learning. For the pedagogical side, primarily motivated by external pressures, the parents, uh, their uh, friends, the people around them, their relatives, so that's the main reason why they are actually learning the external motivators and distractors at the same time. But in andragogy, it is more of intrinsic motivation, yourself. So you want to learn because you want to learn. So that is it. Next slide, please. Oh, by the way, before we go on, let's go back. Sorry, I have... Uh, I almost forgot Mr... Uh, Mr. Whitby, so you have now the knowledge of pedagogy compared to andragogy. But Mr. Thomas, uh, Dr. Thomas D. Whitby, a famous person in uh, education at the same time, has a lot of followers in Twitter, or also known as Tom Whitby, wrote in his article entitled Pedagogy versus Andragogy. He said and argued that these same principles can be used for both adults and kids since there are some instances that kids are mature enough to think like a mature and there are some instances that even you're an adult you'll uh, you're you act like childish okay thank you next slide please so we have here the pedagogical triangle by norm Frazen. So we have in this illustration first the triangle which represents the teacher-student content relationship wherein there will be no teacher if there will be no student and of course for the learning or teaching learning process to continue you should have a content or a topic to be discussed by the teacher and to be actually given reaction by the student. And the circular illustration here are the pedagogical situation wherein the teacher will think of ways how to nourish this said student and how these activities will continue day by day. Next slide, please. 